Valentino giving me shoes. Out our community. Tupac was killed in September. In November, Yafeo was killed. In January, a woman that I know had a child, Giovanna, was murdered. Everyone, people, everybody that I know has someone in their family or in their immediate area who's been killed. And this is an issue that doesn't just have to do with finding, if, if you find tomorrow the, the killer of Tupac, mm -hmm. it will not solve these problems for all of us. Two men approached the speaker's rostrum and uh, discharged shots at him from apparently very close range. Yes, I turned around quickly, and the next thing I saw was Malcolm falling back in a dead faint. My mother threw herself over her babies, and she yelled out, they're killing my husband. I heard shots, and I saw people crawling on the floor. I saw, and so I got down too. Then when I was looking out, and I saw um, someone look in amazement to the front. I knew they had shot my husband. He sustained one shot in the lower right chin and the other six hit him in the chest and uh, body. I looked out at him and I said, he's going to die. I kept saying to myself, he's going to die, he's going to die. How many? Sure, immediately? No, he wasn't uh, dead immediately, uh, but uh, expired uh, very shortly thereafter. Black community is tired of promises. Chicano people are tired, tired of promises. People in America are tired of promises. We have to bring the people to another level where they will not listen to such jive crap. We have to even bring the reactionary thinking, racist people in America to a point where they realize the demoral, dehumanizing acts that America is pulling. The fascist overt acts that America is pulling. I remember Lyndon Baines Johnson getting on television and saying he will not bomb Vietnam. Will you just vote for me? I will not bomb Vietnam. And he talked, talked all over America. Promised to jive war on poverty that never really occurred. And six months later, Lyndon Baines Johnson was bombing North Vietnam 90 miles an hour because we had promises. We weren't conscious enough to see. In a very organized little bit of history, when I came to Canada, in Montreal, at a hemisphere conference to end the war in Vietnam, this is the first time in my life at that time, some four years ago, that I had met some righteous fighting Vietnamese brothers. One was an ambassador who finally got his point over. He says what, I'm, what he was talking about was that aggressors leave this country and go to Vietnam, saying we fight the people who come in our land and aggress upon us, and we fight the reactionaries they're already in our land. He says, but you are right here, as they put it, in the belly of the whale. And a member of Tupac Shakur's entourage, a witness to the shooting that left the rapper mortally wounded, has himself been killed. The murder on Sunday is further complicating an investigation already hindered by uncooperative witnesses. UPN's Sue Keenan has the story. He was a rapper who toured with Tupac Shakur. 19-year-old Yafeu Fula was shot in the head early Sunday morning on the third floor of the housing project where he was visiting his girlfriend. She found him slumped on the hallway floor, said he'd made a joke as he answered the door. He said, yeah, what if there's someone coming to kill me? And he said, we all started laughing, like, just get the door. And then he came and opened and he came to the door. And then you heard the gunshot. Mm -hmm. Late today, police were holding two juveniles in connection with the murder. And on the streets of Montclair, where the young rapper grew up, friends listened to his music and angrily objected to reports Bula's death was in some way connected to the fact he'd been part of Tupac Shakur's entourage the night he was gunned down two months ago in Las Vegas. People who have their ass wrapped this and you know what I'm saying, witness the Tupac's murder, they ain't got nothing to do with that. Well, he just fell a victim to the streets. This Essex County, it ain't got nothing to do with nothing else. It's just sad that he had to go at 19, you know. 
many friends now mourning his death believed Fula and Shakur were half-brothers. It is clear they were close, both shown here with the West Side symbol that stands for gangster rap. And while the investigation is continuing, police at this point do not believe there is any connection between the murders of the two men. Sukinen, UPN News 13. We are right here in the belly of the whale, and those of you in Toronto are right next door to the belly of the whale. The story of each of these vicious weapons, this attack, this attack by the Black Panthers on the police, plus the rep weapons which were recovered uh, at the uh, depot where they were storing them, clearly demonstrates the true character of the Black Panther Party. Nobody, I have never denied that there was no weapons there. As a matter of fact, he would be a fool if he didn't have a weapon there, knowing how the, the ferociousness of the pigs, how they just jump out of the cars and, and shoot you down, how they knock on your door and blow uh, 19-year-old sister's head off with shotguns, how they kill two brothers in, in one week. Uh, yeah, he's, and as a matter of fact, everybody that, that, that's concerned should have a, a something in their home to protect themselves because Hanrahan is a madman. Hanrahan, can you tell me why your officers did not try to use tear gas? Isn't this the usual procedure to flush someone out of a building? Our officers uh, use the means necessary to effect the search uh, and to present, prevent themselves from being killed upon after they were killed after they were fired upon. Isn't it true that you usually use, your men usually use uh, tear gas in situations such as this? And why didn't they use it this time? No, that is not true. Is not true. They came with a murder on their mind, see. Yeah. Even if they wanted to take somebody to jail, it would be a simple matter of just shoot some tear gas in here and throw everybody yeah. out. Right. right on. This is where our chairman had his brains blown off and he uh, lay in his bed. Good evening, I'm Elaine Corral. And I'm Dennis Richmond. Oakland police responding to a report of gunshots and of a body lying in a West Oakland street. This morning found former Black Panther leader Huey P. Newton dying in a slowly expanding pool of his own blood. The victim of a gunshot wound, Newton had come full circle. A criminal in the eyes of law enforcement, to some a hero that led many of the nation's blacks into the 70s. More recently, according to others, a crack cocaine user who died on the streets where, for him, it all began. Police tonight say they have no suspects, no motive for the murder of Huey Newton. We have several reports, beginning with Lloyd LaQuesta on what police found when they responded to an emergency call this morning. Police say when they arrived at 9th and Center Streets in West Oakland at 5.30 this morning, Huey Newton was still alive. An ambulance rushed him to Highland Hospital, where he was pronounced dead at 12 minutes past 6. Paramedics left his shoes and socks behind, which police took for evidence. There was also a 10-foot-long pool of blood, where he was found lying face up. The black activist who once preached the power of the gun had died by the gun. Police believe he was shot where he was found. He was found on a sidewalk, and uh, we're not disclosing how many times he was shot or the caliber of weapon or any other information regarding his wound. Police say they received a single call reporting the shooting, and that so far they have found no one who actually saw the shooting. Well, I seen the main lane down, I saw the blood, and I called my wife through the top window, and so, so did the man. Did you know who it was? you have any idea? I don't know who it was. Several people say they heard the gunshots this morning, but many didn't pay much attention. Gunfire is not unusual for this neighborhood. There was no commotion. There was no uh, commotion after the fact. It was just quiet and clean, and it was over, and, and nobody knew anything. Okay. At a news conference, police said that while the shooting occurred in a known drug-dealing uh, area, off, they have no evidence the shooting was drug-related, no motive, and no suspect. It appears that uh, the person was on the street who fired the shots. So it doesn't appear to be a drive-by. Police did tow away a maroon Ford Escort, but wouldn't say why. People in the neighborhood say it was the car Newton used when he frequently visited this area. The seen? car's been out here a lot. I haven't seen him got gotten out of the car, but the car has been out here real, a lot, a lot, over a month. For hours after the shooting, the curious gathered on the street talking about the murder. Why on this street and at that time of morning? Why would Huey Newton, Dr. Newton, be out on 9th Street, you know, near houses at this time of morning? Police say what happened on this street was a 97th homicide of the year for Oakland. 
and police say it's being treated like any other unsolved homicide. The question is not will it be nonviolence versus violence, but whether a human being can practice his God-given right of self-defense. Shot down like a common animal, he died a warrior for black liberation. If the generation before him had not been afraid, he perhaps would be alive today. Remember like Solomon, there is a time for everything, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to love, a time to hate, a time to fight, and a time to retreat. In the name of brotherhood and survival, remember Bobby. And you're not gone for one reason. Because the Black Panther Party refuses to let you get slaughtered. We have definite, reliable information on the whole situation. You are not going. And if I sent you up there, you'd hate me. You hear that? We do not make non-violent protests without the position of taking, making sure we defend ourselves. services for Bobby Hutton, who was shot and killed last Saturday night by Oakland police, were held here at the Euphrasian Church of God in Christ this morning. On April 6th, uh, members of the Black Panther Party were ambushed by the open pig. And when little body was killed, he came out the house with his arms up, being so the run to his car, and they shot him down. Little Bobby is only one example. He represents all the other black men and women who have been murdered and killed throughout history for the last 40 years or when black people were first brought over here. Uh, Lil Bobby, he was the first member of the Black Panther Party. He was dedicated, he was young, he was only 17. He was disciplined, he knew what he was fighting for, and he had uh, his principles, the things he fought for, maybe other black men didn't realize what was going on, and people still don't realize what Lil Bobby died for. He did 
died for black people. He died for revolution so other black people and people of the third world can gain their freedom. The freedom which has been denied. Was murdered. Bobby Hutton's body was a house down. They said he'd come out with a gun and they had floodlights on the place. If he'd have had a gun, they'd have shot him on the front steps. Now his body was down, then the fire trucks come along, they washed blood away, of course. But they literally murdered Bobby Hutton and shot and wounded Eldridge Cleaver and Warren, these other men. This is what the police department has done after they've set the house on fire, the fire department set the house on fire, put tear gas in the place, etc., shot the place all up. Fellas came out of the place with their hands in the air. It is my opinion that this is the latest in a series of attempts to liquidate the leadership of the Black Panther Party. At first they moved against Huey P. Newton, Minister of Defense, and they are well advanced in framing Bobby Seale, the chairman, and now for the first time they have moved directly against me, shooting me and attempting to kill me. I think this is a calculated plan that has been carried out. Uh, Valentino giving me suits, gangster 